it's here, right? Yeah, you can just park here, man. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got everything, yeah? Yeah. It's all in here. Okay, da. I'll wait here until I come back. Remember to pray before you go in, yeah? I'm sure you'll be fine. you smash it. You sure you won't get bored or anything? I don't know how long I'll be. Ah, don't worry about me, man. I brought my Bible with me. So I'll just read until then. Yeah? Yeah, man. Cool. I'll see you in a bit, bro. See you in a bit, man. Looking good, bro. <laughs> All the best, bro. Father, I pray as Thumbi goes into the interview that you'll guide him and give him the wisdom he needs. If it's your will, Lord, help him to be successful in getting this job. I pray that one day he will be a living testimony of your unconditional love. May he always put you first in all that he does. In the loving name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Uh, Dylan, can you play? Can you come through? Hey, Thumbi, Thumbi! Oh, Okay, Dylan, if you want to take a seat for me, please. So, I'm Sean Zalendra. I'm the branch manager here at Paradise Limited. So, I can see from here, obviously, you've been to university and so on. Um, where do you see yourself in five years' time? So how was it? I got the job. You got it bro! <laughs> Congratulations bro, seriously! Oh, praise God man! And you know what's crazy? They gave me a higher role than what I applied for. And you know what the salary is? 40,000 pounds on now. 40,000 pounds! 40,000 pounds! No way! That's unbelievable man! God is always good man. You're gonna say this as a testimony tomorrow on Sunday, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But imagine now. I can finally buy that BMW I've been asking to buy for the longest time. Yo bro, praise the Lord. Yeah, today. Sure bro, what time? Alright, no worries, we'll be there. Okay. Okay man. Take care. God bless. Bye, bye, bye. It was John. So he said youth are doing outreach in about 30 minutes and it'd be nice if you could join them. You cool with that, yeah? Yeah, I guess. I was gonna go celebrate with my friends tonight. Ah, oh, man. You can do that tomorrow or whenever. I mean, God just blessed you with a job. The least you can do to thank him is just hand out some leaflets at least. Yeah, nah. That's calm. I'll just go see them tomorrow then. Cool, 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 man. Gonna tell Amma and Appa about the job, yeah? <laughs> As if they care. There you go, guys. And some pizza. Oh, thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, hey, guys. Hey, it was good. It was good, man. It was good. Hey, thank you. Should we, should we get them? Yeah, Hi there, praise the Lord. Just wanted to invite you to Christmas carols. 
believe that God loves us so much that he gave his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. So that basically we can have the gift of eternal life. Hi there, would you be interested? I'm so not interested. You know, I'm not a Christian, but it's sad to see how the meaning of Christmas has changed in our societies. I can see how much the birth of Christ means to you guys, but for others, it's just about trees, food, and Santa Claus in it. Hi there, guys. Would you be interested in... Ah, so basically, what you're telling me is that you believe Jesus died for my sins. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy, that's crazy. I can't lie to you, because I've done a lot of sins. Have you ever been to church before? I used to go with my mum when I was little, but I haven't been in a while. Well, you're more than welcome to come along this time. We'll have a Christmas carol service on the 17th. Uh, just over here. It'll be great food, great entertainment. You should come along. All right, I'll try my best to be there. I hope to see you there. Hi, excuse me. Would you be interested in coming to our carol service? Oh, hey there. Praise the Lord. My name is Sam. Be nice to join our carol service happening on the 17th. Look, I don't know you, but it seems like you're going through a lot of pain and suffering. But all I know is that there's someone out there, someone who loves you more than me or anyone else in this world. I mean, he loves you so much that he gave his life for you. You may not understand this now, but please remember, there's always hope. You're kind of shivering. You look cold. Here, take this. I hope you can join us. What's your favourite scarf? And what, you just give it to a random person? Don't even let me touch it. Sometimes in life, we have to give up the things we love so that the world can see God through us. It's getting late, no? Shall we make a move? What's the fun? Bro, you just got a 40k job, man. Put your tie on. <laughs> you know what? I'll put it on for you. <laughs> he sent that Stefan guy and gave me his job. <laughs> what a day, bro. 40,000 pounds. 40. Shh. Just keep walking and don't look back. I said, don't look back. I was just some random guy. Hey, yeah. Can we help you, brother? Hey, listen, yeah? Let's not make this harder for ourselves. Give me the phone and I'll be out of here. Look, brother, we don't want any problems. Hey, relax, man. I ain't your brother. Are you going to give me a what? Let's not make this harder for ourselves. Hey, bro, don't vex me. Who do you think you are? What? Say something now, man. Dylan, just give him the phone. No. Just give it. No, why should I? Bro, I love this.
Romans chapter 8 verses 35 onwards Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or fear? Or nakedness or peril or sword? And to be fulfilled For your faith we are filled with போலீசாதான் <laughs> 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 இந்த மேலே என்னெல்லாம் இதெல்லாம் சமாளிக்க முடியாது நீனே போய் பார்த்துக்கோ போ குட் ஈவினிங் ஐ ஜஸ்ட் வாண்ட் டு இன்ஃபார்ம் யூ தட் வி ஆர் டூயிங் எவ்ரி திங் வி கேன் டு ஃபைண்ட் யுவர் பிரதர் ஸ்கில் ஐ மஸ்ட் வார்ன் யூ இட் மே டேக் மோர் டைம் தன் எக்ஸ்பெக்டட் ஐ திங்க் திஸ் பிலாங்ஸ் டு யூ ஐ பிலீவ் தட் திஸ் வாஸ் ஃபவுண்ட் அட் தி கிரைம் சீன் வேர் யுவர் பிரதர் டைட் Who do I even have now? No one even loves or cares for me. No one. If God loved you, why did he let you die on me? Why? I know where you can find your brother's killer. Who is this? <laughs> Not that it matters much. But if you must know, I'm known as the god of this age. W- what do you want? Listen, if you want to avenge your brother, then revenge is the only way. Imagine how good it must feel to put an end to the man who took him from you. The police still haven't found him. So don't you think it's time to take matters into your own hands? Come on, Dylan. It's going to be one year and your brother's killer is still out there. 
How long do you want your parents to think you're a coward? Where do I find him? MK City Centre, tonight at 6pm. Hi there, praise the Lord. My name is Pinky. I was wondering if uh You are with Sam. I remember seeing you last year with him when he gave me that leaflet. How is he? Sorry, what's your name by the way? Dylan. Dylan, how can I reach him? I have so much I'd like to tell him and thank him for, but I couldn't get his contact anywhere. You can't. Oh. Why not? And one night, after he handed you that leaflet, person in this world who actually cared about me. Now every single Christmas is going to remind me of him. I know how you feel and I know how difficult it can be. Trust me. No one can understand my pain. No, my parents. You know, last year I lost my child. My husband had left me. And mentally, I started to collapse. If I'm being honest with myself, the way I was going, I don't think I would have even been here today. I used to ask myself, who even loves me? Why did a child, my child, who did nothing wrong have to die? Why would God let this happen in my life? At that time, all I wanted someone to just comfort me and tell me it was okay. But wherever I turned, I just saw loneliness. But that day, when your brother handed me that leaflet and told me about Jesus, he said something which really encouraged me. He said that there is always hope. And then I started to seek that hope. Believe it or not, my encounter with Sam was the reason I opened a Bible for the first time in my life. As I started reading more and more, I realized the answers I was looking for wasn't here for the whole time. Dylan, in a pare. Yosi, unganna kitta dani anna kattika pora na. Varkela unganna yaranda thani dey mari irka poriya. Long Anna Vitit Pon in the Ganamana Woody at the Nirith and Arthaporia. Mana cut Nanbana and the Varila in Nikinana Dakra. Near the Kurchan Kavala Pada the Dillon, Umela Anbukata were under Rikra. Our carter Anbu in the Bumila Yara Lame Katamudia. Nalik in the Nadakon Nanachinik in Niki Kavala Pada in a over Tagapunakon Terio, Thampilling like in the same. I'll be praying for you. Please do come to a service if you can. Oh, this and this calf. Sam gave this to me. Every time I wear this, that reminds me of his kindness. 
His action truly reflects his faith. God bless you. Romans chapter 8 verses 35 onwards Romans chapter 8 verses 35 onwards Romans chapter 8 verses 35 onwards Romans chapter 8 Well, my brothers and sisters, uh, greetings to you. We have a family affairs in the church today. Many of you know him. Uh, he hasn't come to church for several months. Now he is back. It's Dylan. Welcome you, Dylan. Christmas. For many, it's a season of joy, festivity, exchanging gifts, and spending time with family. But as many of you know, last Christmas was anything but joyful for me. It was during this time that my brother was murdered before my very own eyes. And I convinced myself that every Christmas to come would just serve as a reminder of his untimely passing. He died trying to save me. He laid his life so that I could live. From that moment, my world turned upside down. I lost myself. My brother, a man with a heart of gold, free of selfishness, malice and hatred. <laughs> I'd always say he was someone whose smile would light up every room he'd enter. There was something so special about him. Something I couldn't put my finger on. And it was for this reason things even more difficult to accept. I knew I had lost someone. I didn't know who I had lost. All I knew was that I looked up to him. I enjoyed his company. And I knew he loved me. But there was still so much more that was unique about him. Something so mysterious to me. And as every day went on and on, my pain only grew greater and greater. Uh, I would think to myself, what if I had listened to him that day? Would he still be here? Would he still be alive? I had all these, these questions in my head again and again, for which I had no answers to. So I blamed myself. I knew my brother was a man of God, a man of great faith, because I was with him, going to church with him, doing outreach with him, praying before eating, praying before sleeping. I too considered myself a Christian. But after his death, every bit of faith I had was replaced by anger and this anger I would feel this massive urge to seek revenge and it was on this pursuit of revenge that everything changed a woman a woman in a very similar situation to mine came and told me that my brother Sam was the reason she had found God she told me that her despair turned to dancing her grief into gratitude 
She had found hope in what was a hopeless place. <laughs> and to me, this made no sense. How could someone be led to God by the very same person's death who led me away from God? But as she spoke, I quickly began to realize why my brother was so special. He was special because God was living in him. He allowed God to take complete control of his life. So when people admired my brother, including me, we were actually admiring the way God was working through him. Kindness, love, discipline, sacrifice. These were all the characteristics that Jesus Christ held. Now my brother never feared tomorrow, because he knew that he was saved, and he knew what it meant to be saved. My brother never craved or desired the love of the world because all that mattered to him was the love of Christ. But how do I find this love? How do you find this love? Sometimes I think, what if I had picked this up a little earlier? This was the only thing left in my brother's hands as he died. The first time I opened the Bible again, after a very long time, I read the verse which was read by Pastor at his funeral. Only this time, I listened. Romans 8.35 Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels or principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now my brother may have died for me, but brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ came to this earth to not just die for me, not just for you, but for all of humanity, so that even if we do die this fleshly death, we will one day join him in eternal life in paradise. Jesus died the most cruel death of all time, the death of the cross. He hung there amongst the mocking crowd with a crown of thorns on his head. Spat at, laughed at, humiliated. And he hung there for you, for you, and you. And as he hung there, he simply said, I love you. Now Jesus Christ was born to die. Therefore, Christmas isn't just about the birth of Jesus. It's about the birth of love, the birth of kindness, the birth of peace, the birth of joy, the birth of sacrifice. 